What's going on guys? Welcome back. And if you had seen my recent ranking of everything that I saw in 2021, you'd have seen that this film, Spider-Man No Way Home, was extremely low on that list. Today I will be discussing why said film did not work for me on almost any level, but before I start ripping this movie to shreds, I may as well talk about what I liked about it. And that list is very short. I basically liked nothing about this movie. Look, Tom Holland, I love that guy. I think he's a great actor, and he very obviously has a lot of passion for the character of Spider-Man, but the material he was given in this film just doesn't do him any favors. And I also think the general setup for the film is rich with potential. Ending Spider-Man Far From Home with the revealing of Peter's identity to the world is very interesting and has a lot of potential, but I felt the way it was executed in this film was just awful, frankly. This film continues the trend of this new Spider-Man Home trilogy, I guess, of completely resetting the story in each film. At the end of Spider-Man Homecoming, Aunt May discovers Peter's identity as Spider-Man, and Michael Keaton's vulture keeps Peter's identity a secret from the other criminals in jail. In Spider-Man Far From Home, they decide to write in that Aunt May is now completely fine with Peter being Spider-Man rather than being concerned for his safety, like in Homecoming, and Mysterio reveals his identity to the world, therefore rendering Vulture keeping Peter's identity a secret to be completely pointless. This film now continues that trend, which I was really hoping they would not do, by having Daredevil show up and just basically tell Peter that all of his criminal charges are going to be lifted, and I guess we're just supposed to assume that happens. He just disappears from the movie. Thank goodness Peter had Daredevil there to alleviate all of his problems. There goes any potential from having his identity being revealed. But that's not the end of it, because despite having all of his criminal charges lifted, Peter, MJ, and Ned are still unable to enter MIT. So Peter decides to immediately go talk to Doctor Strange, because I guess he can't think of any other alternatives, where he tells him that he would like it if he could reverse time and have it so his identity was never revealed to the public. But Strange responds by saying that he no longer has the Time Stone, which is true, but maybe you should go talk to the Avengers, dude, because I'm pretty sure they have a time machine they can use to go back in time with and change the past. But I guess they just didn't think of that, so that doesn't happen. And then Strange decides, against the best wishes of Wong, to perform this spell without telling Peter any of the ramifications that may come about as a result of the casting of said spell. And then after, tells Peter that there is an alternative that he could have gone for by calling the MIT agent and asking them to reconsider their application. Why would Aunt May, Happy, or any of the other adults in Peter's life not have told him that that was an alternative? Why would Peter have not talked to Aunt May or Happy or any of the other adults in his life? Instead of immediately consulting Doctor Strange? I guess we'll never know. It's so obvious to me that all of these plot holes and contrivances only exist to reintroduce old characters for nostalgia's sake. And the ending of the film doesn't make any sense either, with the casting of a new spell to, I suppose, erase the memory of Peter Parker having ever existed. But that doesn't make any sense. Like, how is Peter meant to progress in society? Like, does he not have an ID? Has he been completely erased from the records? Because Happy is at Aunt May's grave, which doesn't make any sense to me because... How would Happy have ever met May without having met Peter? Like, it doesn't make any sense. They're acting like all of the characters in the film have still gone through the events because when Peter talks to MJ in the cafe, she has an injury or something that she received from the previous battle. So I guess they retain memories from all of the experiences they went through with Peter as Spider-Man, but they just didn't know who Peter was? How is that even possible? If so, then wouldn't the video Mysterio made ousting Peter Parker as Spider-Man still exist somewhere out there on the internet? Couldn't someone just upload it to social media and then this whole thing just starts over again? Like, none of this makes any sense. It's so badly written. And I've seen people acting like it really does show the hardships that Peter Parker has to go through as a person and what you have to give up in order to be Spider-Man. But it's so obvious to me that there's going to be some sort of loophole they can invent in the future. At this point, MJ doesn't remember who he is, but she still has the Black Dahlia necklace, and she still has an injury that she received in the battle or something. It's so obvious that she's going to remember in the future. In Fantastic Beast 2, The Crimes of Grindelwald, they did the same thing by having Jacob Kowalski come back and just say that the Obliviation Potion only erases bad memories 
of which he had none, so he still retains memories from the experience of the previous film. To be fair, that was something they established in the first film, but it's so obvious to me that in the next Spider-Man film, they're just going to reset everything, there won't be any consequences. MJ, Ned, everyone will remember anyway, there's going to be some sort of loophole that can be invented, and that's just how bad the writing is to me, is I can just see through it, I can see it falling apart, and I cannot become emotionally invested in the story when it's full of so many plot holes and contrivances. Speaking of not being able to become fully emotionally invested in the story, we have Aunt May, who I suppose is the emotional core of this film, if you would say that. And if you didn't know, she dies in this movie, becoming the equivalent of this Spider-Man's Uncle Ben. Which I think is really stupid. People are acting like this is great subversive storytelling, because they subverted the common Spider-Man origin story by having Aunt May die instead of Uncle Ben. But it's very obvious to me that they had already established Uncle Ben's existence within this franchise. The initials on Peter's suitcase in Far From Home say BFP, obviously implying Benjamin Parker, and in Civil War, he says, when you can do the things that I can, but you don't, and then bad things happen, they happen because of you. That entire quote is just a different take on with great power comes great responsibility, and that's obviously meant to imply that Peter had great power, but he did not use it responsibly. Which led to Uncle Ben's death, similar to the Raimi movies. Why would they never talk about Uncle Ben? Why would they never acknowledge his existence? Why are they just now acting like Aunt May is this series' version of Uncle Ben? It's just so stupid to me. Because they obviously just implied that what usually happens with Uncle Ben for Spider-Man happened in this franchise... But now they're just not acknowledging that. They're trying to act like this is his true origin story and that Aunt May is now Uncle Ben. But I did not care at all when she died because these films have never bothered to develop the connection between May and Peter. Throughout all of her films, Aunt May in the MCU has just been, oh, look, it's hot Aunt May. Ha ha, because Aunt May is usually the old wise lady, but now she's meant to be like this young, attractive woman. And that's all she was used as was a gag. But now we're meant to really emotionally become invested in her character, and we're supposed to really care about their relationship. But they never built that up. The only time they ever really gave any credence to Aunt May and Peter's relationship was in Homecoming, where she was concerned for Peter's safety at multiple points throughout the film. But that's the extent of it. In the previous film, she was just a joke. In Civil War, she was a joke. She was a joke in Homecoming as well, but just less so to the extent that she is in these two films. And now they try to make up for that in this movie, but they just don't have the time to develop it. So I don't care at all when she dies. Sure, I feel bad for Peter because he's losing someone important to him, but these films never bothered to actually explore how much she meant to him. They never developed their connection at all until this film where they don't have enough time to actually make me care. So I did not care at all when she died. And it does not help that immediately after this scene we're supposed to really care about, they have a comedic scene with Andrew Garfield what, sweeping cobwebs off the ceiling in Ned's grandma's apartment. This film has the same problems as every Marvel movie. The tone is completely inconsistent. One second it's trying to be a soulful drama, and the next it's trying to be a comedy. Now let's move on to the element of this film that everyone has been praising, and that is the return of Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and all of their villains. I hated them being in this movie. They served no purpose outside of nostalgia, completely intruded upon the story, and did not feel consistent at all with their past characters. It actually pissed me off by how badly written they were. Let's start off with Doc Ock. He just kind of shows up on a bridge and is like, where's my machine? And then he starts committing property damage. But later in the film, he says that the moment he was pulled from was when he had Spider-Man by the neck. If I'm remembering correctly in Spider-Man 2, at that point in time, the chip on the back of his neck had been short-circuited by water. So at this point in time, would he not be flipping allegiances between good and bad? Tell me it would not have been a more engaging action scene to have an unwilling Doc Ock fighting Peter Parker while fighting the AI tentacles. Would that not have been a more engaging action scene than just having him stomp around and spew out corny one-liners? It was just a bad scene. He didn't feel consistent at all with his character from Spider-Man 2. Nothing about him made any sense. Then we have the lizard who 
was never that well written of a character in the first place and he's just kind of there he doesn't have any screen presence at all in fact they literally write him out of the movie for a certain period of time where he's just waiting in the van for some reason when they go to visit peter parker's apartment then we have electro who also felt inconsistent with his character from the amazing spider-man 2 in the amazing spider-man 2 jamie fox was playing somewhat out of character for himself he was playing this nerdy guy who was just kind of mistreated by everyone around him and in this film he's just kind of a ripped cool dude and he talks and acts like jamie fox he's not better in this movie i don't know why people are saying he is he's worse if anything then we have green goblin willem dafoe who everyone has been praising and saying that he really outdoes himself from the original spider-man film I thought he was just doing the same thing he did 20 years ago. They don't add anything new to his character. He's not that compelling of a villain. He's just kind of there. People are acting like he's the main villain and like he gives such a great performance. I mean, Willem Dafoe's a good actor and he obviously loves playing the character. He's hamming it up in every scene, but they don't really do anything with him. In fact, they don't really introduce him in a compelling way. They just kind of cut to a scene of him in an alleyway and reestablish the split personality aspect of his character. But... At least they didn't completely assassinate his character, but he wasn't any better or worse. He was just there for fan service's sake. Then we have Sandman. Oh, Sandman. I cannot wait to talk about this. I hated the way they handled him in this film. If you didn't know, I love Spider-Man 3, and I love Sandman's character in that film. He's not really a villain in the common sense of the word. He's just a guy who has bad luck, as he said in the movie. And in this movie, he wants to get back to his daughter, but despite that, decides to team up with the villains who are trying to stop the Spider-Men from sending them back to their own dimensions. In Spider-Man 3, he also said that he didn't want to be this. He didn't ask for this. He didn't want these sand powers, which I suppose he might consider to be a curse on his life. So why would he not want to be cured and sent back to his own dimension? He's not going to die so why is he opposing the Spider-Men? If anything, he would be working with them. Nothing makes any sense. His motives make no sense. They completely assassinated this character that I love from Spider-Man 3, and that honestly just pisses me off so much. Tobey Maguire is here too, and his character arc was concluded in Spider-Man 3. He serves no purpose here outside of fan service. They didn't really assassinate his character, I suppose, but he didn't need to be here at all. He didn't do anything important. And then we have Andrew Garfield. Now, this one, I can understand why people would want to have him brought back, because his series was cut short. We didn't see the conclusion of his character arc. And I suppose some people would argue that we finally did see the conclusion of his character arc in this film by having him save MJ and amending his greatest mistake by failing to save Gwen in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I suppose that is the case, but he acts so inconsistent in this movie. He talks to Tom Holland's Peter Parker about how, following Gwen's death, he became bitter, stopped pulling his punches, and got violent. Despite that, we never see that side of his character. He's just joking around. It's like the problem of every other Marvel movie, where despite how much time you may put into developing a character, when they get put in these big crossover Avengers-type movies, they just act the same they're all written to be the same character and that's the way andrew garfield acts in this movie he had the funniest lines and moments in the movie but i still didn't really like the way they handled his character i felt like if they had just treated his character with maturity and not have him be this jokey guy the whole time then he might have actually been good but they just gave him a lot of bad dialogue and he didn't act consistent at all with his past character and also the spider-man being in this movie don't even make any sense because the spell brought in people who knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man, right? Not other Peter Parkers. If so, it's a multiverse. There's got to be more than just two other Peter Parkers. Why would they be the only two Spider-Men? Oh, wait, because the audience knows them and they're familiar and it's fan service. Okay. And also the villains say that they were pulled from moments before their death, but these Spider-Men were pulled from years in the future? Why? Why would the spell do that? Why would it go out of its way to pull them from the future and not the past? Oh, wait, because it's convenient for the story. Okay. Also, I couldn't get invested in any of the dynamics. I've seen people saying that the villains interacting is really cool, but I didn't find their interactions investing at all because they're just these weird, like, SNL skit scenes where they're, like, talking back and forth and they're, like, jokey. Like, there's a scene with Electro interacting with Lizard and there's a joke about how Lizard likes to turn people into lizards. 
Wow, you guys are so original with your humor. There's also a scene where Sandman and Electro are talking, and they both realize that they fell into something, and then Electro is like, I guess you gotta watch where you fall. These characters who, in some cases, have extremely tragic backstories are all treated like weird MCU parody versions of their characters. They don't even feel consistent with the mostly well-written characters they were in the prior films. This film also suffers from all the problems that every other Marvel film suffers from. The inconsistent tone, as previously stated, the terrible CGI, which just looks unfinished, and that sucks because a lot of these things were created practically in the original films. The Green Goblin suit, while looking weird, was a real costume in some scenes of the original Spider-Man film, and Doc Ock's arms were real practical things that were created and manned by puppeteers in the original film. In this film, they're all just CGI, they don't look very good, and this film's color grading is terrible, it has no color, every action scene is basically set in the dark, except for the scene on the bridge with Doc Ock, every other scene is like, really dark, and since I saw this film at a drive-in at night and it was snowing, I couldn't even see what was happening. The color grading was terrible, and I mean no offense to John Watts, the director of all three of these Spider-Man films, but he has no directorial style, and that really does hurt the film, because not only are these returning characters not done any justice, they aren't done justice in a creative or cool looking way because the direction is so bland. What also sucks about this movie is that it's not even consistent in its own themes. The main conflict of the film is that Doctor Strange believes all of these villains should be sent back to their own universes to die, but Peter believes otherwise and believes that everyone deserves a second chance, so he attempts to cure all of these villains, and Aunt May supports him in that and helps him in that endeavor, wholeheartedly believing that what he is doing is the right thing. She dies still believing that what he's doing is the right thing, and towards the end of the film it becomes more of a story about Peter trying to prove that Aunt May did not die in vain and that she died for a good cause. They're able to cure the villains and they get sent back to their universes to die anyway. What they perhaps should have done is show the villains actually arriving back in their own universes and not dying, but they never show or say that, so the implication is that they still die anyway. So great, movie. What, Aunt May died for nothing then, I guess. How badly written can you get? Like, this movie is so bad, I can't even wrap my head around why they made certain writing decisions in this film. And typically, I can really appreciate a badly written movie if it has consistent themes and has a good message and if its intentions are good. But I don't even feel like this movie knew what it was. I feel like this film was just a bunch of people scrambling to make a movie, having no idea how to actually continue the story from the previous film. So they just conclude it really fast and then throw in a bunch of nostalgia for the sake of it and assume that people will love it. And it seems as though everyone does love it. And that's good. You know, I'm glad that everyone's getting something out of this movie, but... I personally could not stand it. It was just an awful conclusion to this trilogy of Tom Holland movies. And people are acting like it's such an original concept to make a trilogy, an entire origin story for a character, but I don't even feel like that's the case. I feel like they realize that they messed up this series so bad that they just reset the entire trilogy at the end by having Aunt May say with great power comes great responsibility, and then they just reset all the past events so that they can tell different stories with this version of Spider-Man, hopefully helmed by people who actually understand the character and can write good stories. I'm glad that people are getting something out of this movie, but I personally just could not get any enjoyment out of it. As I said in my ranking video, when a movie requires me to turn my brain off to the extent that this movie did, I cannot get invested in it, and I also didn't even like the way that the returning characters were treated. I felt like they were treated with complete disrespect by the script, which, once again, seemed to think of them as nothing more than these weird SNL parody versions of their characters, 
and this film just did nothing for me. I really liked nothing about it. Even the music by Michael Giacchino, who is one of my favorite composers, he won an Oscar for Up, Rogue One he did the score for. I really liked his scores for the two previous Spider-Man movies. He composed some really excellent pieces, such as the Vultures theme, which is an inversion of the Avengers theme, and the great Mysterio theme in the previous film. I even like his main Spider-Man theme. But in this film, the only memorable tracks from his composition are ones that pull direct motifs and cues from the prior Spider-Man movies starring Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. The only original piece of music he composed for this score sounds like it was ripped directly from Thor The Dark World. I'm not even kidding. If you listen to the track from this soundtrack titled Exit Through the Lobby and then go back to the track from Thor The Dark World titled Into Eternity, it sounds almost identical. I didn't even like the music. Usually with Marvel movies, even if I don't like anything about the movie itself, I like the score. Like, Avengers Endgame, I think, is an awful movie, but I love Alan Silvestri, and I think he composed an excellent score for that film. I feel like Giacchino phoned it in for this movie. This movie just has nothing that appeals to me, and that sucks because I love Spider-Man, and I love Tom Holland as Peter Parker and Spider-Man, but... I feel like the people behind this trilogy just had no idea in regards to what they were doing, and they just threw a bunch of shit at the wall to see what stuck, and a lot of people liked it. Me personally, outside of Homecoming, I didn't really like these movies, but with all that said, that's all I have to say about Spider-Man No Way Home and why I didn't like anything about it, honestly. You guys, please let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Just whatever your thoughts are, please let me know them all in the comments below. And of course, as always, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.